Good morning, my friends. Well, morning for us. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Space Game Junkie Podcast. <laughs> I, as always, am your co-host, Brian. And joining me for these morning shows, as always, is your co-host, Spaz. Hello. And uh, we are powered, of course, by caffeine this morning because we're welcoming a guest uh, from the other side of the pond. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Joining us from... Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Aachen, <laughs> Germany. Um, yes. Perfect. Hey. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> you, you have to get the in there to do it right. Uh, okay. And I'm just going to say it like an American would, apparently. Uh, Bernd Lahan, <laughs> the, CEO, Perfectly fine. the CEO of Egosoft. Here, uh, back with us. This is your second time on. Thank you for coming back. To talk about uh, the latest expansion, the second one for X4 um, Cradle of Humanity, which just came out a week ago uh, as we record this, one week ago today. And we're going to talk about uh, the uh, g the base game, the expansion, the series as a whole. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. Um, so I want to uh, thank you again for coming on, man. It's, it's just a pleasure to have you. Uh, I, I might have mentioned this last time, but I have a special love for you guys because you guys kept making space games during those dark years when no one else was. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah, during during the uh, 2000s, basically, yeah. when hardly anybody else was making them. They like really took a like your first space game. Uh, your, your first game came out in 99, which is like the year of death for space games, really like like. Free Space, well, Free Space 2 and X-Wing Alliance and your game came out that year. And that was, and, and that was like the last hurrah for a while, you know. Um, when, which year did Freelancer come out? No, not Freelancer, Free Space 2. Um, yeah, yeah but, but Freelancer was there as well around the same time. That was 2003. Right. That was four years after okay. that. A little later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So long ago. I'm yeah, sorry. I know. It, it, we, we, it started a real drought. Like after 99, we had like Independence War 2 a couple of years after that. And then we had Free Freelancer a couple of years after that. And then, um, and then uh, yeah, it was... It was it was really strung along for a while. So I have nothing but love for you guys for for staying focused for one thing, uh, which it, which must be hard to do sometimes. Is, is that hard? Because have people have, have you had the like ever had the um, the temptation to diversify into anything beyond what you guys do, or have you always maintained that laser focus on the space game on the on the X series? No, no temptation at all. No, because uh, I mean, I don't know if you know our history, but um, it, it X the X series X Beyond the Frontier was not the first game we made. It, the company oh. at that time was already ten years old, and uh, we um, we were a super small, tiny studio here in Germany, and uh, working mostly for the Amiga before. And <laughs> at the time, the, the games we made before were nothing in comparison like like also size and uh, success wise so experience the frontier was the first game that was successful also on a uh, more than just national level i wouldn't say international completely because it was uh, step by step that it grew into other countries as well but it was at least in in the uk for example directly uh, also published right from the start in 1999 and i think it released in in the us uh, only a, f a year or two later because we had to find a different publisher but it was for us anyway a huge success and uh, and it was always my personal dream to do these kind of games i mean the stuff we did before was also fun but it was never paying paying back and uh, uh sci-fi and in general uh 3d graphics also was always my um my personal laugh so um that that really never meant that i would do anything other than that if we, if i can and uh, yeah luckily we could also um of course i'm not so sure i mean maybe one reason why we uh, were a little bit able to swim against the stream when the space games disappeared is also that our game is not just the normal action space game it's also has all of those other elements with trading and so on so it's it's a mixture of many genres and so we are not so vulnerable uh, to these uh, 
mood swings when it comes to what's in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> mood swings. These things do have cycles. Uh, but now we're in a, now we're back in a full blown cycle of like just so many space games out there. It's, 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 it's an amazing time. Yeah. And, cool. and, and, and amazing and that, time to be a player. It really is. It really is. I don't know. I, I can't imagine what it's like being a developer right now with, with, 10,000 games oh. coming out on Steam a, a year. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm, it's, it's, it's challenging. But on the other hand, for us, we are in a luxurious position with, with, uh, with a title that already has, has fans and has a following ship. It, this is much more of a struggle for um, startups now if, if yeah. to gain visibility if, if you have so many games coming out. But yeah. um, in general, it's, of course, also very cool time for developers that, it has it has a upside and downside. I mean, lots and lots of competition can be a downside as well, but it's also very cool to to be in that whole movement and see what's what's happening. And also, when you have uh, bigger titles like, of course, in our case, Star Citizen is of course the big big thing in the room. Then that always gets attention to to ga- to space games in general, and also gets new players to to look in this in, into this genre, and that also helps us again. So. Yeah, Star Citizen is a both is both a blessing and a curse, really. Uh, oh. you, you can you can really give it some credit for this current resurgence we're going through, because people are like, "Hey, people actually want space games." What? Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, yeah. it it's it's such a problem. Uh, well, know. yeah, it's, it's a problem because it's one of the main reasons why a lot of people have Kickstarter and crowdfunding fatigue in general. Yeah, hmm. yeah, exactly. Um, but that's a whole other show. That's a whole other show. <laughs> We're here to talk about X4. So, uh, first off, congratulations on launching the second expansion mm-hmm. for, Thank uh, you very much. for X4. That's wonderful. Um, now, now, my question is... Um, First off, I have to say thank you for going the expansion route that you guys are doing and not the, I won't mention the studio, but the kill, killing them, with, killing them a dime at a time with DLC. Uh, like, oh, I want to try this game. Oh, there's a thousand DLC packs. Oh. No, no, thank you. I'm not jumping into this. Oh. So, uh, yeah. so I appreciate That's- no, it's, it's, it, I, I don't want to say anything bad about other other titles, obviously, but but I mean it is it is hard to to find a, a good compromise on on how to monetize. I mean, oh, I, um, yeah, of course, you, you you want to make enough money to to finance the development, and uh, I mean, um, just making uh, such an expansion one one expansion per year at this current rate is is of course it's very expensive to develop and. Uh, and plus, there's a lot of work that also goes into the free update. Actually, more, more maybe even than in, in into the expansion. So, um, but we are, as I said, in a very luxurious position at the moment right. because, yeah, it, the the game is really doing very well, and we have a lot of fans. But other developers may have to be more aggressive with with selling items. Or <laughs> no, that, I mean that's fair. But I appreciate that you're going the more old school expansion route because I think. I think that does, I think for me, that's better, I think, because it, one, it gives you something a little bigger to look forward to as a player, and it uh, it allows you to not spread yourself too thin um, with development, like, oh, we have 18 DLC coming out, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but I wanted yeah. to ask you, like, how do you plan out, like, what is the process of planning out these expansions? Because each one of them, uh, the two... Each one of them, well, every expansion for your game has for your games have been pretty big. Uh, they oh. add new areas, usually new races. Like this time, we get the Terrans back in the mix. Um, uh-huh. So, what is your process of coming of, of coming up with and implementing these massive expansions uh, for your for for your game? Well, it's it's as. Um it's always two things that go together. On the one hand, the big expansion, and uh, and uh, in parallel, also the development for a major free update for the main game. So this is uh, this was with Split Vendetta. We made uh, the 3.0 update, which had lots of new features for the core game, 
and now with uh, with uh, Cradle of Humanity, it's the 4.0 update, and um, it is often that we uh, have these these yeah big big gameplay features that we add to the game are also in a way shaping a little bit of the expansion. In this case, the terraforming idea was. Uh, um, going well together with with Earth because I mean Earth, if you know the the history of the X universe, was uh, were the ones that that tried terraforming first. If you if you read the the books about it, that uh, had has a lot to do with the history of the Xenon and so on. And um, so yeah, we we kind of make a package. We we think of uh, what works together well, both in terms of um, gameplay features, but also story and um, and assets like what cool um, technology fits to this to, to this race that that makes sense as a as a new ship. So what what will people like? And um, so it's it's a lot of discussion in the in the early phase always. And and finding this is it takes takes usually like the first a couple of months of the whole development is, is like finding the thing. It's not like one big vision and we have everything on a piece of paper from day one. It's usually like a process in which there's at the beginning just a vague idea and then it gets more more refined while we go but uh yeah works quite well yeah i i have to say i, I was actually going to bring that up i really like that you not only have these big expansions but you couple it with a big free update um you know that goes along with the base game so even if you don't have even if you can't afford the expansion currently or you or whatever, or for whatever reason, you still get a nice juicy update to the game you already own. That I have to say that's uh probably great for you guys to update the game, but it's also great for player for goodwill, for player goodwill. So I really uh wanted to applaud you guys for that approach. I, I really like yeah, it. It also pays off for us because I mean we, we keep the, the main game always in, in the uh in the focus of new customers then as well. And like now we we have this uh, new feature terraforming in the main game as well, and that's a pretty major new gameplay thing for end game players. So it's it's something that, of course, those people that already own the game and have have made a lot of money can now enjoy. But it's also something that helps us get new attention for new new uh, new potential customers who just see it see the game again and then buy into the the, the core game. So yeah, because uh, Steam does like to list which games recently got updated, and so yep. that's that's a big thing for visibility. Uh, but Absolutely. Ag- but again, people also people go to the Steam page and like if you have a if you have like a plugin, like they can see when the game was last updated as well. Um, and if it looks like it's been updated recently, for me at least, if I see a game that's been updated recently, I'm I'm more interested in it. If I see if I see a new game and I'm like, oh, it hasn't been updated in two years, I don't mm-hmm. know. <laughs> no, you are not alone. And I, I mean, uh, Valve has has uh, worked a lot on on all kinds of mechanisms to make games give games visibility for different reasons. Like, uh, yeah, all of those things. Like, your your <laughs> friends are playing this, and and this might be interesting to you because you like other games and all of those kind of things, which are all helpful. But um, yeah, up, it, it definitely motivates developers to update their game and uh, work on them longer, as opposed to um, the older days where um, you couldn't afford to do that, where you just had to start a new development basically the day you finished one. Like your, <laughs> your game is out of the door and then you just to make money, you, you have to basically start immediately on a na- new major project. and. Thanks to Steam's, uh, uh, yeah, to the visibility we get, uh, that's not necessary at the moment. That's great, and, and that brings up uh, uh, that brings up a question for me because you guys, you've been around long enough where you've had the transition from sending out boxed copies where you'd sell, you'd you'd release a game, and then immediately have to start to the next one, and you've been here throughout this transition to digital that we're we're now all in the midst of of digital because of steam and whatnot. Uh, how, what, what did that change for you guys moving from the pre digital distribution era to the digital distribution era? Cause we don't get to talk to a lot of people who've been through that transition. Um, so, it, so for you guys, what did that change? Oh, a lot of things. It, uh, it, it, first of all, the, the main thing it 
did was it saved us as a company because I'm pretty sure uh, we wouldn't exist anymore if it wouldn't have been for uh, this whole movement over to to Steam. Uh, like like uh, there were especially the development of X Rebirth, which took us so much longer than we originally planned and had was 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 yeah riddled with problems. Mm. Um, we uh, we would just have not been able to financially sustain that. So that that was uh, luck, basically. Um, but it also, yeah, I, I guess what you want to know is more like from from the development point of view, what what changes and um, it's it's a different process. I mean, nowadays you still try to set a deadline for a project, and you, you this is this is the the, the same principle, but um, you you um, you are more flexible now. I mean, this is also because we are independent as a developer now. So this is this is two two things that go together here, but are not necessarily the same thing. The one is the physical versus. Uh, oh. Uh-oh. We may um, have lost the connection. Oh, there we go. Oh. Sorry? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, that's Should okay. I start again? No, uh, you were saying versus the physical connection. Uh, the process yeah, has but, changed. Yeah, yeah. The uh, If you have a, um, a physical product, you it's at least more likely that you need a publisher. Um, mm. So we we always worked with a publisher uh, in in those days, and then the publisher sets the deadline. The publisher provides the financing. Of course, the whole uh, um, yeah yeah you you the 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 way the product is released works very differently. You have uh, the the money is spread differently, of course, as well. And uh, it is more important that you plan everything ahead uh, for m more like a year, uh, because because the product needs to be listed and so on. So um, the, the dig digital uh, releases give you a lot more flexibility and um, yeah, and it makes it more attractive to work completely independent, which we are doing now. I, I also wanted to say you guys have, because you've been around a long time and you, and you have, um, you have six successful games, you have a lot of wonderful fans and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm seeing this firsthand in our chat. I don't know if you guys are watching the chat, but I, I love when fans get passionate about a thing and like discuss mm -hmm. the minutia of a thing, mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. and with right now in the chat, they're talking about engines and they're having little arguments about things. And <laughs> I, it, it rarely goes this fast for us. Cause we're a small, we're a small show, but I'm, I'm just loving watching yeah. fans in the chat. Just like, you know, talk to each other about like, no, this engine's better. No, if you work with this engine, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's really. Yeah, no, absolutely. We, we, we are lucky in, in, in this, uh, in this sense. And we were from the start. That's actually also the thing that, especially when the first game came out in 1999, it was absolutely not standard that you had a large online community. The whole internet True. was young and uh, forums and online, uh, uh um, communities were not not a given so it it this grew with with the game very quickly and um that was the reason why we continued this development and where we got a lot of inspiration for the development basically from then on so yeah because you guys have a, you guys have a pretty you like people have made open world trading games and and people have made you know open world um you know, space flight games, but you guys have a fairly unique mix of having both like a mix of, of flying and whatnot mechanics, but also heavy business elements as well. Heavy mm -hmm. economic elements as yeah. well. That really hasn't been emulated. And um, I, I'm just wondering, does that like, does I'm not saying it's splitting the focus because it really does work for you guys, but mm -hmm. Have you ever like? Has it? Have you ever thought of like maybe we should just do a, a pilot game, or maybe we should just do an oh. economics game and not do no, both? It's a fair, it's a, yeah, it's a fair question, of course. Uh, um, if it would be a lot easier to focus on w only one area, and and uh, um, that is, uh, however, like the opposite of what X is. It is. It is like. Um, the, co the concept, the idea was from the start that we provide you a universe and you can do in it whatever you like. 
basically. So, and that started much smaller than what it now means, but it, it's still the same philosophy. So, um, and that that brings with it problems sometimes. Yeah, uh, mm. because um, we have we are attracting deliberately very different uh, audiences, very different types of customers, and they have different expectations. Some want just the trading. Some want primarily building stations and uh, uh, some want the uh, first person space action uh, um, um, in, in a ship and we try to provide everybody um, as much as possible what they want um, but of course you have to make compromises when you want to make a game that has all of those things so um, there there's no denying there are um, um, there is a price that you pay if you are not just one thing and uh, uh, yeah and and that must but, make. But I think that's oh. also clearly a benefit. So yeah, <laughs> no, the obviously there's a benefit. It. It's it's not only is it yeah. working for you guys, but like usually when something's yeah. successful, people copy it. But like no one's really copied your formula. Like at well, least at the. I mean, you've gotten games that like copy part of it. Like some games let you build stations here and there, and blah blah blah. But like mm -hmm. you guys take it to a level that no one really has been able to uh, to emulate. I oh. think. Which again really puts you guys in a singular position, which is great for you. <laughs> um, yeah. But when you say problems, like we were talking about this before the show, uh, one of the issues with a game like this is is bugs. Um, the, these these games you can be buggy uh, with so many moving parts. Uh, would you guys say that is probably one of your biggest challenges with these games? Is it, they're so big and there's so many moving parts and people play them so differently that it, it can you ever keep up with the, with, with fixing things? I mean, you guys have come a long way since 1.0. I got to give you props. Like the game feels better than it ever has in my playing of it. You guys have been doing a great job, but would you, would you guys say that is also your biggest challenge it is, it is, is, is the, all the keeping all the pieces together. It, it definitely is a huge challenge yes uh and and you're right it's it's hard to um to do the more sophisticated the more complex the game gets the more features it has the the more there are uh chances for bugs and um the part that is uh that only adds to this is uh i've, I've talked about that before but yeah the, the the whole um the way the economy works this bottom up thing that the fact that it's not um programmed to do what you need to see at that moment from the point of view of a player but that it is programmed to basically simulate the universe um, that that has um, this nature of developing differently every time and that's quite unique also for a single player game in particular um, that that is something that people can expect from multiplayer games nowadays that you have this living universe where be, thanks to the players, everything is realistically simulated. But in our game, it is also completely like that on a single player game, uh, because we are right from the start simulating thousands of, of NPC agents that are trading and building stations. And, and, um, and we are not, not always able to predict entirely what, what will happen. So, uh, one way of testing the game is basically fast forwarding time and 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 then just looking and seeing what's what's going on and that uh, is very time intensive so yeah there are huge challenges and um and also as you say with the with the customers uh being very different and that's the other thing being very extreme like like how many hours do they put in the game um that that means uh, we, we have players that that have uh, really it's it's not just as, as uh, it happens but it happens very frequently that players have many hundreds of hours thousands of hours in the game and um that means uh they see things differently from anybody has seen them before and and both because the game is so dynamic and because they play so long and that of course always has the potential for for bugs and uh, so yes it's a huge challenge that's all i can say and it's a, it's a, it's a never ending challenge i think we I, I feel very happy with the the place we are in now because the game had not just the time since 1.0 but but uh, in general it had uh, also before that a lot of time to 
to mature uh, already as an engine, um, uh, starting with with X rebirth. But if you see the whole process from the start where we where we started with the development of, of X rebirth, that was in two thousand seven. It's thirteen years of ongoing development on this on this platform. So that's. And now we are in a good place, but yeah, it was not always the case. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to thank you for keeping your focus on single player. I've ranted about this recently on Twitter, but like whenever I'm, I'm either talking to someone about a single player game or talking to a developer about a single player game and someone's like, Hey, is it going to have multiplayer steam comes out of my ears? Just it, <laughs> it, it makes me so angry <laughs> it's like not every right. game needs multiplayer people. <laughs> you know? Correct. I think it's some right. people Absolutely. just they, they expect multiplayer is going to happen as if it's something that you can just drop into the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we turn that switch on. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but I mean, you know that we are working on some multiplayer functionality anyway. But it's of course different. It's it's not uh, this uh, right. Uh, yeah, um, I think that the natural expectation with our game for multiplayer is an MMO is a is is the uh, the vision of Star Citizen. I'm not saying what Star Citizen is or is not now. I, I cannot judge really, but uh, it's certainly this vision of an of a huge universe where everybody is trading with each other and and playing with each other. Not so much what you know from uh, from smaller games of the past where you where you have little uh, teams playing together against each other or yeah basically uh, uh, that 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 wouldn't really be very helpful for an x game where you also do where you also have the economic sim simulation and so on and that all doesn't really make much sense in in in, in a quick uh, for for a quick uh, shootout or something like that but um yeah that's why we choose this this path to this uh, asynchronous multiplayer feature that we are going to relaunch again very soon. Yeah, rem yeah, remind me what is what is that exactly? I remember reading about it, but my my brain is foggy this morning. I apologize. Can you remind me what uh, that what that asynchronous multiplayer actually is? Yeah, we we t we started a beta test of of a, a part of that functionality already, like in uh, two months or so after the original release of the game, um, called Ventures. And what what that did is you could just send um, your ships with a certain station uh, module that you built. So like the, you first have to build a station and then you add a module to it, which is called a venture dock. And on that venture dock, you can send ships into other players' universes. So it's not you personally going there, but you are sending a ship on a mission into another player's universe. And it was kept all peaceful. It was basically uh, just doing exploration in these other universes, and it, it it took real days. So this is this is a real time feature then, obviously, and it wouldn't be affected by Zeta, obviously, like like the time acceleration you normally have in the game. Uh, so, it be, but that we are presenting that as if, as if it is an, a, a multiverse, a, mul a different parallel universe where you are sending your ship to, and oh. and when it comes back, it can report to you which players it has seen so so to speak and other players have seen your your ship in their universe um th this uh was was running for the last two years basically and um uh yeah of course the the, the player side of it was also that you got some some benefits out of it it, it br these ships bring you back something but it was all peaceful there was no competitive element to it so far and uh, this is going to change soon we are uh, mm. releasing a um a bigger version of that, which also allows teams to form and 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 interact with each other. But it's yeah, that's that's the the asynchronous aspect will will stay. So it's still this this basic principle that you are sending ships to other player universes. I think that fits very well with what the game is. It is a single player game mostly. Your universe is on your computer, and that doesn't change. But your universe is just one version of a universe, and there are others, and you can interact with them, and that adds this social aspect for those players who want it so they can basically form groups and play with friends a little bit and that, that's what we are giving them i i have to admit i like how that that basically answers the multiplayer question you're doing it your own way here you go stop mm -hmm. asking <laughs> <laughs> 
fine. We're adding something, but we're not doing exactly what you want. <laughs> we're not ma- we're not making another Eve online here or whatever. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, no, that, that would change the game dramatically if we would. I mean, it's 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 a fascinating thought. No, ma- no, no question. Uh, the, the MMO uh, universe is, is is great, but of course you couldn't make X be X when you would do that because, yeah. uh, for example, players in our universe are much much more powerful. Um, they can uh, get f- huge fleets relatively quickly. They can build huge stations relatively quickly. Become super rich and super powerful in that universe, and that's something you just cannot do in an MMO because, well, maybe one player could do it, but <laughs> then thousands others would just have to see, uh, sit and and watch this one super powerful player. That's uh, it's just a balancing nightmare. And, and going back to a thing we talked about earlier, one player in the chat said he had uh, 5,000 hours just in X4. That's, <laughs> that's <Okay>. amazing. <laughs> that's, okay. that's, uh, that's something. That's on um, one hand, I, I say it's impressive. On the other hand, I also say I am not surprised. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, this game definitely encourages people to really, really dive in. There's just so much here. Um, oh. Now, someone in the chat asks, can we talk about AI improvements? Um, I'm not entirely sure what they're referring to, but you you probably know what they t- they're talking about. Ha- like, well, I'm sure... Go ahead. We are always working on the with AI. This, this uh, indeed, <laughs> you is a good question to ask. What exactly he's talking about? Because people mean different things. Uh, but mostly, it's of course uh, uh, the co- in general the code for for piloting ships. Uh, mostly, it's it's uh, for us code wise. This mean this can mean problems with pathing, like like uh, uh, yeah, dif- different behavior. Uh, uh, things of, of of ships we are always working on that and always improving uh recently before the release of 4.0 for example we did a lot with mining ships and changing uh how they find uh, resource areas how they uh, pre- prefer some areas over others we have made changes to um how ships go through jump gates. That was, for example, a criticism prior to 4.0 that uh, capital ships, especially large capital ships, took too long to go um, through jump gates because they had to basically align and wait for a time uh, for a slot to go through in order to avoid any collisions. Um, yeah, but also people sometimes uh, uh, talk about AI when they mean uh, problems with. Uh, collisions in in docks and we we had some we have just very recently fixed uh, a couple of bugs uh, that were still plaguing us with uh, with some internal docks where where ships are just uh, bouncing around in the in, on the inside sometimes when they collide with the station or with yeah, other so, ships. someone in the chat mentioned that um so th- thank you for addressing that because that's what i was about to ask next because someone someone in the chat asked exactly about that thing where <laughs> ships are bouncing into things um so yeah, I've not seen that yet, but I can only imagine again with a game this massive, uh, how challenging the how how challenging it must be to have good AI. Now, now my question is, when you when you're simulating this huge universe uh, in the X Games, do you simulate everything that's going on in the entire universe, or do you mostly focus on what the player can see and then abstract the rest? It is everything is simulated. The whole universe. It is just obviously simulated on a different level. There is what what we call high. There there are actually multiple attention levels. We call them high. Uh, simplified, you could say there is high attention and low attention. Low attention being everything that you cannot see, and high attention being everything immediately around it. It isn't that clear cut. There are more levels to it. There's so so slightly lower um, uh, attention levels, uh, but but. Uh, in principle, that's how it works. Uh, and the, the main difference is that for everything that is lower attention, you don't have to take care of things like collision detection and uh, the physical geometrical shape of stations. They are still logically the same station. So the game knows about exactly all the modules that they are made from, what they are producing, what they um, how where that it has docks or does not have docks, what kind of ships can docks, how many ships are there. All of those properties are the same, but it doesn't have to do um, complex uh, 3D calculations for uh, for docking. So sometimes if there might be, for example, this problem with, with the collisions inside docks that we were just talking about, that 
would be a purely high attention level uh, problem. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I mean, if you mo- if you did everything the same, like no computer could run that. So that, <laughs> that no. makes sense. Oh, no, no, no. No, as I, there are many other aspects to it as well, like like uh, the NPCs that walk around on stations. When you uh, when you land on a station, you see people. Uh, those people have their daily life. They walk around. Of course, it's it's a relatively simple daily life. They walk around <laughs> mostly, and and sometimes clean ships, and uh, sometimes they wave in other ships. Sometimes uh, some some of them are standing and and selling goods. But even that, even that level of detail would be too much for easily many hundred thousand uh, npcs because we have many thousand stations in the universe so yeah uh, you wouldn't want to simulate all of them so there's there's attention levels make differences to all kinds of things in the game yeah no that makes sense uh, i i've noticed other games that have like similarly large universes do something similar where they primarily oh. focus on what the player can see and immediately uh, interact with and kind of yeah. abstract because you but, have to really yeah it makes sense yeah but the difference is still that our game always has this bottom-up approach for the for the base economy so um all the goods that are manufactured all the uh station building all the resource mining all of that part is always happening also in low attention so every single mining ship and every single or br- uh, rock in the whole universe exists no matter if it's high attention or low attention everything that's regarding the economy everything that's regarding the existence of ships like is it is it being hit by an enemy is it being all of that is still there it's not like we are we are never reducing the ships or reducing uh, anything that's that's regarding money if you you could say so the npcs right. all have budgets and, and and resources to to work with now uh I, I hope this isn't a sticking point but we have several people in the chat asking about vr because uh, mm-hmm. you did you did rebirth i i just got vr my own self i just got an oculus oh. quest 2 and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm loving it i haven't tried rebirth yet in it um, but we have quite a few people in the chat asking <laughs> if, uh, if X4 has any VR plans in its future. It's, yeah, I figured that. Be, I, think. Yeah, I, mean, you know, it's, it, I would love to. It's, uh, the, the answer is easy. Um, we would love to do it. It's just a money question in the end, honestly, because it's uh, the market. We tried the waters out with X Rebirth VR edition. Um, uh, we will... Uh, we, we really want to update it again because we haven't touched uh, VR edition for more than a year now. So we, we, we really want to backport some of the later uh, code improvements that we did for X4 back to X Rebirth VR edition. And um, sure, it would be possible to make an X4 based uh, uh, VR game. Um, I don't think it would simply be enabling vr in the existing x4 because uh the the, the most fundamental uh, problem with that is always frame rate as, as uh, the game um even on a killer pc still doesn't have to run 90 plus frames all the time that's uh, um uh, but that is a requirement for virtual reality. So um, the the, uh, the universe, we, we, you have to do compromises for VR. And that's something that changes the game. And that's something we have done for VR edition. It's possible. And it is fun. It's great. I, I really love it. It is just uh, the question is how many people can buy it. And uh, that depends on how many people have an adequate uh, 3d uh system for it and that's unfortunately not a big ma- big enough market yet that it yeah. really pays for the cost of the development it's like what two around two percent of game players i think on steam said they have vr i think 1.6 to two percent i think that's it i think that was last year's numbers yeah 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 it's, so. not, it's not a lot it's it's i mean mm. I'm, I'm really enjoying it but yeah i can see that it, it's it's tough it's it's tough because I mean it's it's a chicken and egg problem. Obviously, people are not going to buy a VR system if there are no games for it. But I think we've done our part of that chicken and egg problem by really doing a huge investment in in uh, X Rebirth VR edition and making that game in the first place. So uh, now it's up to the chicken to grow. <laughs> well, you you have some uh, in the chat. You have some uh, people offering to kick to a Kickstarter 
<laughs> if you mm-hmm. ever launched one for the VR version. Uh, so. I don't know how much how much money can you ask. I I, I would have a bad conscience. I I mean I mean uh, I know people are willing to pay much more than just the forty fifty euro that a game costs. Uh, and and uh, sure, um, there are some people who have very expensive VR systems who probably would be willing to pay uh, several I don't know several hundred. Oh. But I don't know. I would have a bad conscience if there's a couple of people who are paying huge amounts of money, and uh, I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe it's, it's, maybe it's in tough. the future we could do something v- like that. It's but that's yeah. Well, tough. VR I think is getting to a place where it's getting more powerful and more affordable. Like I got this, um, I got this Quest Two, which can run on its own, but also plug into a PC, and it doesn't cost a lot. It's only a few hundred dollars. So it's getting to a good mix of power and price point where I think more and more people are going to dive in, but we're not quite, mm-hmm. quite there yet. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I totally get what you're talking about. Um, oh, we have a couple of um, more questions. Someone's asking about uh, save duration reduction. Apparently oh, some, yeah. someone was saying the time can be reduced by turning off the Windows 10 search index. And and Is that just, true? I don't I I'm just reading this from the chat here. Uh, Interesting. Because, yeah, I did tell that. Um, there, there is some interaction with Windows sometimes when when the game is sa- saving. And yes, our save games are huge. Um, so uh, they and they are compressed. Like I mean, we have sometimes 100 megabyte save games uh, compressed, so they can be yeah oh, wow. very big internally. And if uh, so, um, we we have actually looked into optimizing the safe duration significantly with all kinds of, of, of things uh, not too long ago. Um, not too much success, yes, I must admit. Um, but but uh, there's a couple of research tasks that um, are still outstanding to, to, to try to do this more. But I cannot promise anything. Um, the, the, whole, the, uh, the indexing, uh, or the Windows indexing thing is new to me. I have to try that out. Yeah, I'd never heard of that either. They also recommend disabling antivirus real-time scanning. Um, yes, that, that definitely helps sometimes uh, if there's some if it is extremely slow. I mean, that is, that would then be basically an uh, uh, I, I I couldn't say a bug because it's not our fault, but but yes, it is like a bug in the system. Then that uh, sometimes the uh, Windows antivirus thing inter interferes with um, an XML file because uh, what what we do is basically we are saving in and, and also loading all of our internal data in XML file structure. Mm. And uh, sometimes if Windows recognizes that it wants to analyze the XML file at runtime and, and wastes a lot of uh, performance oh. on that. Oh, geez. Uh, so, um, but uh, yeah, we... Um, it shouldn't definitely. It should not interfere with saving, but uh, it it might be with with some antivirus software that would be bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn off that Windows. I I also want to turn off that Windows indexing thing and try it because I um I timed it at one point. It took about thirty seconds to save a game, which for so, for for the uh, for the huge you know universe you're saving, that's not it's not yeah. terrible, you know. Yeah, loading is slower than than saving. That is one thing, uh, but it's especially the saving that we would want to uh, improve on because uh, you want to save often sometimes. And uh, loading, you maybe in the best case, you only load once once a day when you start playing. Um, saving, you 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 can't have that luxury, or you are risking that uh, you, maybe something goes wrong. So, um, saving is more important than loading. And uh, yeah, Absolutely. so we are looking into improving that. Yeah, and, and it takes a while to load, but you're loading everything because there's really like there's no loading screens once you're in the game, which is really yeah. impressive. You jump from one sector to the next, boom, you're there. It's not it's not like there's a small like oh look let's wait while we load the next sector, you know like yeah that's correct, it's, but it's not this is uh, this is not everything is loaded. This means that the game is streaming everything in the background. We couldn't load all the three D well, assets. Right, right. But what I'm saying is good. once the game. Mm-hmm has loaded from the save or, or when you start yes. it. Once you're in the game, yes. there's like no noticeable load screens or lag time or anything like that, yeah. which is really that impressive. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the goal with the new engine. Yeah, that that it's always tries. It also also tries to predict where you are going. So sometimes this goes wrong, and and you can see that then that when when you go through a jump gate uh, and and the game didn't anticipate you going through it that uh, something still isn't there yet so you see some geometry that pops in that shouldn't happen but sometimes it does also that's also something we, where we have uh, another uh, potential upgrade in the future that that could improve that further um, but in general the game is always trying to load ahead what what you will need next that's uh, and that should in the best case mean that you can go everywhere without loading yeah, and, and you're you're pretty close to that, I'd say. Um, mm -hmm. We do have another question in the chat. Uh, will the sectors from X Rebirth find their way back into X Four? I cannot answer. Um, <laughs> probably not. Actually, I mean, we we've talked about potentially um, marrying them with with some of those factions there, um, but uh, as the, the, as I said before about the way we work on on expansions um there are lots of ideas and we kind of throw them around discuss them and maybe something like that comes out of it but i cannot say really no, that's that's totally fair <laughs> yeah how how that, that's the thing where people ask questions and you can't really answer them is it is managing expectations for a game like this a real challenge because because people yeah. want so much out of it and you can only mm -hmm. give them so much. Is is that a thing you're constantly struggling with? Is trying to it is go ahead. It, it it definitely is, and it is definitely also the reason why we can never have. Uh... Oh, uh oh, the other cut up for a moment there. Uh oh, sorry. No, it's okay. It, it's you said it's the reason you can never have. Uh yeah. It, I, I, I was uh, the, what what we cannot ha ever have is is ninety percent reviews on Steam because uh, exactly this uh, people have different expectations um, and and not every I said that before we have so many different types of customers that have very different expectations and you can never make everybody one hundred percent happy. This is much easier if you release a uh, say a jump and run and you make the best possible jump and run then you then everybody is happy. But if you make a game that says this is a universe, you can do in that universe whatever you dream, then people have big dreams. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say the reviews for for X Four have been pretty good. Like I'm looking at uh, Cradle of Humanity right now, and the reviews uh -huh. are mostly yeah. quite positive. I think you guys are really uh -huh. uh, you really yeah. have been nailing the expectations versus reality thing. Uh, yeah. really well of late. Yeah, we are happy with it. It's it's as I said, it's it's uh, we are always happy to get a single percent higher. So every every little percent improvement we can make. So we are always looking at the negative reviews and always looking at any kind of negative or constructive, especially constructive feedback. Negative is of course not nice, but uh, in forums when 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 people discuss the game, um, uh, hearing what what expectations were there that were not met is of course helpful for us and and sometimes uh, very simple things come out of that that we can improve and that then is, is, is of course great especially these kind of quality of life improvements like user interface uh, changes user interface is always a big topic for us because yeah again with a game with many features comes also a user interface with lots of uh, requirements and demands so that's that's always something we are working on constantly i gotta say i really i mean it's 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 a monumental task to have a good ui for a game this expansive and i i really have to appreciate how you've integrated most things into the map view uh i i really do like that and, and well, one thing i also yeah. want wanted to compliment you on is your sense of scale i don't know how you guys do it but it's it's amazing to land on a station, get out of your ship, and look up, and like the scale is like it matches what it is to your ship, and so it's like you look up, and it's like many many stories above you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that that's indeed important. Yeah, and it is of course also the dream that makes the big difference between the previous X Games X Three series and X Four. This 
sense of realism that you get from walking around stuff. I know there are some, some uh, especially elite dangerous uh, fans who say, ah, that's unnecessary. They always say this in a somewhat negative way. Uh, uh, sound that they call space legs. That why why do I need to walk around? Well, but it's it's that sense of realism and and immersion that you get out of having a body and standing there and seeing the size of things that gives you a proportion that that we really tried uh, hard to to achieve. And well, one one thing I love that you guys have done Ooh. is like people always say they want space legs. Like I want to get out and walk around, and then you get it like. <laughs> I don't want to walk around this much. So, you know, you know, like, you know so yeah, people say of those compromises. Exactly. People say they want space legs and then they get them. It's like, wait, no, I don't. Uh, but what I was going to say is you guys have done a really great uh, mix where you have the space legs, but you're not like walking around these endless corridors to get to the trading area. You got your teleporter which yeah. I think yeah. is a fantastic way to be like, okay, you can walk around a little bit, but we're not going to waste your time and ours making these yeah. endless corridors. <laughs> we're just going to yeah. teleport you there, which yeah. I got to go ahead. There are the multiple m multiple sides to that. I mean, we, we've, we've made, of course, the, uh, uh, in that regard, uh, The first, the first iteration of walking around for us was, of course, X Rebirth, which which probably went too far in that in that direction that you mean, uh, where where you had to walk too much on stations. And then in the uh, in the process of improving X Rebirth, we took that back a little bit by 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 adding such features like like uh, more easily walking, uh, teleporting kind of on on stations and also. Uh, doing more actions that are repetitive, also remotely, if you like to. So there are things that, like, especially like moving crew around, that you can do uh, if you want to, also simply from menus. But you can also just go to them and 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 pick them up. So it's 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 up to the player to decide if he wants to have the immersion in that situation or if he just prefers to do it in a, in a menu. Um, um, yeah. So that's, that's, it's always about compromises in, in, in all of those, those game design decisions. I got to say, I love some of the people in the chat. Some people are like, I always want space legs. Give me endless corridors or I rot is I think my, or I riot, excuse me. I think might be my favorite comment of the entire, the entire morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. It's, 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 that, it's, it's, it's also the, the, uh, seamless, um, That, that's of course the, the the idea also with 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 star citizen always uh, the ability to walk out of your ship and onto a station and seeing several ships standing next to each other and and comparing them and walk and seeing also the inside of a ship and that's something that that we are also trying hard with with uh, especially the uh, the smaller ships the, those that can dock on a station and stand around I mean with the larger the ship gets the more Yeah, the, the the bigger the differences get. I mean, in the end, you, you I know uh, you know that uh, you you can of course have have this this uh, Russian doll thing where you have uh, an M ship landing on an L ship and an S ship landing on an M ship, and then you get out of it and walk between them, and and it it, it shows you that. But yeah, the, that's also a part of the walking, and not just on stations. And that's the part of the walking that I think people really enjoy. Whereas if the stations get too big and you have to walk to a trader. That's some. That's uh, that's up to taste. There are people with different opinions on that part. Speaking of a trader, I have a silly question. Uh, when you go to a trader on a lot of stations, there are these doors. There are these like little offices on either side with these clear doors. Yeah. What's back there? Why can't we go back there? <laughs> I want to go back there. It looks like there's stuff back there. I, why can't we? Go, no, I, I know. I, I know why you can't, but uh, that's my yeah. silly question. We do have a good serious <laughs> question though. I, I really like this one. What would you say is more challenging, uh, making a good UI or a good AI? Oh, that's a good question. It's, They are so different, but if I have to choose one, and it's probably the UI. That's uh, the AI is, of course, uh, it's both. Both basically have the problem that they depend on that they depend a, a great deal on the expectations you have, and then and uh, like the on the target audience. With the UI, that's more obvious. Like like um, the if the player is coming uh, to X uh, uh, from from a strategy game. 
side, uh, and his expectation is a, a map that that is uh, able to uh, control huge armies uh, in, in another RTS game or something like that, and and. Um, then, then he has very different expectations to one who comes from a first-person shooter or a uh, where he's just focused on the uh, cockpit perspective and and the immediate controls of his ship, the one ship that you are sitting in. So um, that's that's where the, where this affects user interface. But on AI, it's the same thing. It's like, um, what are you expecting out of it? Is it is it one ship that uh, that lands nicely and 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 does everything in a, as perfect a matter as possible, or is it is it the other focus, the strategy focus, where you are looking at armies of hundreds of ships and uh, and and the uh, and and they are basically dancing in a ballet of of of. Uh, of a hierarchy where the boss controls his subordinates and the subordinates have subordinates again. And, and then when they attack another fleet, they, they spread out correctly. So very different focus, as you can see on, on the AI, but players want everything. And that's, that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, another question from the chat. Will there be an XL transporter? I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm sure you do. Um, well, we have uh, the size classes of ships, and um, XL is uh, the, the largest category of ships. And so far, there are no uh, pure transporter ships uh, in, in, in that category. Um, okay. No plan right now for that. Now, I wanted to mention about terraforming because we, we brushed on that earlier. But terraforming is pretty much the big feature of 4.0. Remind me, is that the f is this the first time you do anything with planets in in the in the X series? Because I don't recall in any of the previous games. I mean, the planets were there, but you really didn't do anything with yeah. them. You know, so is this the first time that you actually interact with with planets? Correct. Yeah, interact. Yes, uh, it's the first time that you interact personally by by changing them for sure. What we have done in the past, especially in earlier games, is that we occasionally showed something on a planet, like there were a couple of cutscenes in X2, the threat already, and also in Reunion in the storyline, where you saw that, yeah, the, the, the planet is there, some people are on the planet, but that was just story cutscenes. It wasn't really the game itself. And as you say, mostly the planet is, an, is, is, is a nice thing in the background. Uh, we try to, to get it more real already now in X4 also by making the visuals of the planet actually align with what what the properties of a sector are like like when you look on the in the encyclopedia the uh, games encyclopedia page for for systems you can see uh, uh, all kinds of stats for planets and those stats can be in in exceptions they are also important for the economy like uh, one one thing that we have uh, built up on that uh, for x uh, for 4.0 for the latest update Oh. on your station that are working for you they are coming out of the population of the system and that population of the system again depends on the planets and the terraforming can change that so terraforming can in that way have a little impact on the economy but just a tiny one oh, okay yeah because I don't remember anything I, I remember like there was like some minor like Nothing interactive wise with planets in the previous games, but like there was something with planets, but like, yeah, they've been mostly there mm -hmm. for, for to look pretty and for reference points and things like that. Um, Correct. Yes. But now, yeah, but now, yeah. I mean, now, now you are actually changing their design as well. Like if you terraform a planet, it, it looks different. You, you can really see the difference you are making with those terraforming projects. And as I say, um, if it is a highly populated planet, then you have a higher chance of increasing the population of the sector and, and afterwards then also quicker getting workforce for your stations. And that workforce is now more important. It, it, didn't, it, it wasn't very important before, but now it has a larger impact on your productivity of, of stations. Wow. Uh, so we have to start wrapping up because I have to go to work. But uh, a lot of people <laughs> want to know what is next. For for uh, for X four, I, I I know that's probably a tough question. You don't have to go into super detail if you don't want to, but like people want to know something. I mean, I'm sure you got bug fix. I'm sure you got fixes for Cradle of Humanity and 4.0 in the pipe. Yes. 
but exactly people are dying for like a tease of what's next. But, but that, in all honesty, first of all, that's what's next. We are still working on some <laughs> hot fixes for for four point zero. We have uh, and for Cradle of Humanity. So that's the immediate future, and we have a plan for a four point one update. That is not hot fixes. That's a couple of new features that we actually have been working on before already, but um, didn't dare to release in four point zero because they were too risky and 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 or yeah, we 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 kept we just didn't finish them in time so that's that's the we'll wrap up a couple of things and as and the big thing for us that comes next is uh the mentioned team playing um which which will be released hopefully very soon together with 4.1 um and but what you are probably asking about is more like new expansions after this and also uh, a 5.0 update um which will happen we will work on that um, but I cannot really say yet. Uh, this is uh, for a later point. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you don't want to say something now that you have to take back later. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Totally get that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I hate to wrap this up because this is a. I mean, I I rarely see the chat this busy. I'm sorry, folks. We didn't get to everything y'all said in the chat. I we just you know isn't time. Uh, <laughs> there isn't time in the day. Uh, you have a, you have great fans, man. You have great, great fans. They're so passionate. I, I know. Love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It's this is really great. Yeah. Uh, so, Bern, thank you so much for coming on talking to us again about uh, about X Four. The the it's been uh, it's been a great series, um, and we're we're so happy to see it doing so well. I mean, you know, such a unique space game doing doing well with. Um, you know, doing so so well with fans and 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 selling so well is really encouraging, and I hope it encourages mm-hmm. other space game developers uh, as well uh, that there are fans of this genre, and and mm-hmm. you know if you give them what they want, they'll be there. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, folks, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, for our stream later today. Uh, probably around three or four o'clock Pacific time, we'll be doing Skid Cities, uh, which is uh, some kind of post-apocalyptic city builder thing, which looks fun. Uh, I can't say what we're going to do on the show next week uh, because we have some irons in the fire, but no one's confirmed anything yet. So we might just do a topic show next week. I'm not sure. And then Spaz, are, on Thursday, are we returning to Flashing Lights? I think that's what we have scheduled. That is correct. Uh, folks, yeah. if you're not aware, Flashing Lights is a, a co-op game where you could be a police person or a fire person. And it's it's really fun, but also unintentionally funny. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's going to be fun. So, uh, Bern, again, thank you so much for coming on and, and giving us all this great info about... Uh, your process and and um, and and how and you know just how you've gotten to this awesome point and thank you I thank mean, you for having me of course and nothing but more success for you guys again folks the game is the base game is X Four Foundations but we're taught uh, the the latest expansion is Cradle for Humanity that adds just a lot along with the free four patch that also adds a lot. So if you want probably one of the most expansive single player experiences you can get, um, yeah, definitely check it out. Uh, it's really awesome. It's a lot of fun for whatever. I mean, if you like exploring, it's got that. If you like fighting, it's got that. If you like running a business, it's got that. It's really got everything. Uh, <laughs> it really does. So thank you so yep. much, everyone, for watching and listening, and we will see you next time. Have a great day. Be safe. Be well. Take care of each other, and we'll see you next time.